My father was an engineer and my mother a musician. My earliest memories growing up in Bombay were of my father teaching me computer programming and of my mother playing the piano. I loved science at school, but my mind was filled with music. Back then, the sciences and the arts were opposite paths. This is science and not art. That is art, but not science. And yet, I heard music when we studied vibrating strings in the physics lab at Bombay International School. And I wondered about the physics involved when I played my violin. No one ever suggested to me that science and music could be combined. I remember thinking education should liberate the mind from conventional mental boxes, not just shove information into the same old boxes. I left to study abroad so I could combine subjects. I studied cognitive neuroscience which combines psychology, biology, computer science, linguistics, and philosophy. Later, as a professor at Dartmouth College, I used this training to do research on how music affects the brain. And when I was dean of the faculty at Dartmouth College, I helped set up the first brain MRI center outside of a hospital devoted to research and project-based teaching so that even undergraduate students could scan their brains while they were engaged in some cognitive activity, thinking, perceiving, solving problems. Functional MRI is a breakthrough technology that enables us to see which parts of the brain are active. I dreamed of returning to India to start a university that would inspire kids like me. A university as fine as the very best in the world, right here in India. I am now fulfilling that dream, helping to start just such a university, Sai University, founded by the IT entrepreneur K.V. Ramani in Chennai. Sai University will open in 2021. Now here are some examples from my research at Dartmouth College, where I spent most of my career. This slide shows a functional MRI brain scan of me listening to music. Perhaps the first time the brain's response to music was studied in this way. The red dots show where the brain is most active. Circled in green is a streak of activation along a part of the brain known as the superior temporal gyrus, which is involved in listening to sound. Other areas of the brain are also active, suggesting that music is not processed by just one part of the brain, but rather by networks of neurons that interact. Unexpectedly, I discovered that music activated my superior temporal gyrus on the left side only. The right side, shown here, shows no activation in the region circled in green. Why? That's an interesting question. A later study with my colleague Peter Janata showed activation in the prefrontal cortex, right between the eyes. When the musical harmony switches from one key to another, an elaborate cultural maneuver that the brain has learned automatically from a lifetime of exposure to music. How does the brain learn the patterns of a musical culture? Well, the brain consists of networks of neurons called neural networks. Models of neural networks, that is to say, computer models of neural networks, provide the breakthrough 
that led to machine learning in artificial intelligence. Consider a very simple neural network, just for illustration. Neurons in the auditory system of the brain, which is where you saw that activation, are tuned to different pitches, almost like the pitches of a musical instrument. So each one responds most effectively to one pitch, but not to another. These are shown at the bottom of this slide. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, with sharps and flats in between, or the Indian equivalent, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa, with komal and tivra in between. The do or the sa is omitted in this figure because it is common to all the scales. At the top is another set of neuron-like units representing a higher layer of the brain's cortex, which is what your brain expects or infers. Each neuron in the lower layer is connected to each neuron in the higher layer via tiny electrochemical junctions called synapses. These are shown in the figure as straight lines. Learning occurs when some synapses become stronger over time and others become weaker in response to the music most prevalent in your environment. A Western musical environment exposes the brain to certain typical combinations of notes. For example, the major scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. People exposed to Indian classical music hear certain combinations of notes that are not typically found in the West. For example, bhairav, do, re flat, mi, fa, so, la flat, ti, do. Or in the Indian nomenclature, sa, komal, re, ga, ma, pa, komal, dha, mi, sa. Now I want you to focus on the second note, re flat or komal, re which is rare in Western music, but common in Indian and Middle Eastern music. Listen for the second note in the scale. Versus The first one is Re flat or Komal Re in India. The second one is Re. If the neural network is exposed repeatedly to the 10 most common Indian classical scales, called TATS, the synapses in this illustrative model get strengthened or weakened as shown here. The synapses, that is the lines connecting neurons that are shown in red, transmit activation easily from one neuron to the next. Those shown in green inhibit activation. For example, hearing re inhibits re flat and vice versa. If you hear one, then the other sounds surprising or even dissonant. After learning, if you play Bhairav without the re flat, that is to say without the komal re, the re flat neuron in the top layer gets activated. That means the brain is telling you that it is expected or inferred. You may even think you heard it, even though you didn't actually hear it. Automatic expectation and inference in cultural contexts is a key element of cross-cultural experience. In contrast, if you play the same Bhairav without the Re flat, 
to a network that was exposed repeatedly to only Western scales and had never heard Bhairav before or never heard any other scale with that flatted ray, it will not expect it. If you play ray flat in the context of Western music, it will immediately stand out as surprising and exotic. So if you're interested in science or computers and also passionate about the arts, humanities, or social sciences, there is boundless fertile territory for you. Digital explorations in the humanities are fast emerging, including literature and history. We know that most of the music we listen to and most of the TV and video that we watch is digital. In the future, we can expect holograms and mixed reality to be as much a part of our lives as our digital music, digital photography, and digital video today. There will be an explosion of new ideas. Many of them you may come up with. Also an explosion of new businesses and opportunities for startups based on these ideas. I want to thank all of you at Bombay International School. I received a fine education there. My parents were actually among the founding members. Bombay International School really put me on a path that enabled me to fulfill my dreams.